Hello, I'm Christina, also known as Chrisabug. I'm a digital artist, illustrator, and Twitch streamer. I really love painting colorful and expressive characters. So today I'm gonna show you how I go about painting glossy and expressive eyes. And I'm gonna be using the Artist 24 Pro by XP Pen. I just barely got this tablet and I am pretty excited to give it a try. Something that really excites me about this tablet is the 2K resolution, which is a higher resolution than previous models, so it should be pretty crisp. Also, this might be the largest tablet I've ever worked on. So let's get it set up and start painting some eyes. So setup was really quick for this. After I plugged the tablet in, I just went to the website, downloaded the driver and installed the driver, which was pretty quick and easy. You just have to make sure that you uninstall other tablet drivers that you might have on your computer, just to make sure that they don't conflict. I just wanted to show you quickly how I like to have my tablet set up. I like to have a lot softer of a, of a feeling for my pen so I don't have to push as hard. So I crank up the sensitivity to be really soft. The other main thing I wanted to show you was how I map my two stylus buttons. What I like to do is for this, uh, this top button here, I like to map it to my brush size. So to do that, I just change it to the function key, click shortcuts, and then control alt. And so now when I click this button and I hold down, I will be able to change my brush size. The other thing I like to do is I like to make the other button a um, my eyedropper so I can be color picking from my canvas. And to do that, I just choose Alt. The other main thing that I want to do is I want to map my I want to map my express keys. It's really easy to do that. You just have to come down here to express key settings. Click it and then you can add what program you want to map to. So I'm using Clip Studio Paint. You can just add that from your programs that are running and then you can assign every express key a new, a different shortcut for you to use. Let's get started with the actual tutorial. Since I wanted to focus on eyes for this tutorial, I decided to start off with a drawing that had everything else colored in and a little bit shaded. That way we can really just hone in on the eyes without getting distracted. I'm working with the line art as the top layer right now and the rest of the colors are underneath the line art. So the eyes right now are filled in by the base skin tone which is underneath the line art and that gives us a really good foundation for when we start to color in the actual eyes. Step one, color pick that base skin color, open up the color wheel and drag the color left towards the gray. For eye whites, you are actually gonna want to choose a little bit of a pinkish gray color. You usually don't wanna make the eye whites fully white. Make a new layer and paint in the grayish eye white color. Use the smooth watercolor brush and Clip Studio Paint to soften the tear duct area of the eye whites. This is a default Clip Studio brush and it's one of my favorites. For step two, pick the iris color. This is the eye color. So this character has green eyes and I knew that background was kind of green. So I color picked from the background a little bit of a neutral, a neutral green to use as the base color. You don't have to do it this way, but it is kind of nice to be able to color pick from the surrounding area since eyes are really reflective and can take on the color of the surrounding environment sometimes. For this step, I just recommend using a hard round brush to fill in a solid color. For the next step, you need to know which direction the light is coming from, so make sure you have that decided. For this piece, the light is coming from the upper right area. So I'm just going to draw a little arrow here indicating where the light is coming from. So we're gonna add some soft gradients to the iris. What I like to do is color pick the iris color, and then in the color wheel, I usually move the picker down and to the right, and then I like to 
make the tone a little bit cooler, so down a little bit towards the blue. Then you're gonna come over here and click the lock transparency button on the iris layer. This is the eye color layer. And that way you'll be able to color on this layer with a big brush without having to worry about coloring outside of the iris. Use a large soft airbrush to start gently painting in a dark gradient at the top of the iris. The darker part should actually correspond with where your light is coming from. Because of the shape of the eyes, usually the iris will actually be darker in the area that the light is coming from. So for this piece, um, it is darker in the top right area of the iris. Next, you're gonna do almost the same thing, but kind of opposite. You're going to pick a lighter color and paint in that lighter color on the opposite side of the iris. For this piece, I chose a light yellowish greenish color and gently painted in that gradient on the lower left side of the irises. Now that we have our flat colors in for the eyes and a little bit of an interesting gradient happening in the irises, it's time to start shading. Make a new layer and choose a grayish purple color to shade with. Then switch the layer mode to hard light. This is actually how I do all of my shadows most of the time and it works really great for eyes as well. You could play around with switching the layer mode to multiply or overlay, but for me, I really like how the hard light layer mode makes the shadows kind of colorful. I like to use a hard round brush when I start shading. So I'm using Clip Studio's default G pen brush to block in the shadows. As I shade, I'm thinking about how the eyeball is rounded and how the eyelid is casting a shadow on the eyeball. So because the eyeball is round, you can see here that I started shading in a little bit more on the left eye towards the, the left part of the screen because that, that is the edge of the eyeball. It's falling off away from the light, so there would be more shadow back there. Once the basic shadows are blocked in, I switch to the smooth watercolor brush to helps soften everything up. So I've actually switched to the smooth watercolor brush and I'm using the transparent color palette down in the bottom left corner. So if I pushed hard, I would completely erase the shadows, but I'm not pushing hard. I'm just gently brushing the edges of the shadows to soften them and give a little bit more of a rendered feeling rather than a cell shaded feeling. And all the while I'm thinking about how the eyeball is rounded. Whenever I'm in the shading stage of a piece, I'm always using the express key that I've programmed the shortcut C to because that will switch back and forth between my color swatch and the transparent swatch. So it allows me to go back and forth between coloring in and erasing with the same brush. After the shadows are painted in, choose the eye white layer and gently paint in a little bit more white into the eye white using the smooth watercolor brush. Only blend in a little bit of white into these areas. You don't want to overdo it. You just want to make the eyeballs feel a little bit more rounded. Next, I like to draw in the pupil. Pupils are fun because by changing the size and shape of the pupil, you can really change the style and mood of the piece. Generally, smaller pupils can give a pretty intense feeling and large pupils can give that loving doe-eyed feeling. But depending on your style, you can even play with the shape of the pupils. For example, if you have a really cutesy style, maybe something like heart pupils could be really cute for your character. So for this character, I'm going with pretty small pupils because I wanted her gaze to be quite intense. And I'm painting these pupils on a new layer that's just below the line art layer and I'm using a hard brush. Something else that I really like to do with pupils that I think is fun and can add a lot of interest is actually not making them fully black all the time. So I really like to either color pick from the, the environment or just kind of go with a pinkish reddish to give it kind of a red eye look like you get in old photographs. I think it's kind of a, it's kind of a fun style 
Next, add some more details to the irises. So to do this, I pick the watercolor brush. Not the smooth watercolor brush, the watercolor brush. It has a little bit more texture and it's also a default Clip Studio brush. So what I like to do with this is pick some colors to blend into the eyes and kind of give the eyes a little bit more texture. You can see here how I have a yellowish color picked, but it's actually blending in a lot as I make those brush strokes on the eyes. Once I have some more texture painted in, what I like to do is I like to pick a darker color and add a little bit of darkening to the outer ring of the iris and to the outside of the pupils. Next is one of my favorite steps and it's adding eye highlights. So I just use a hard round brush for this and it's important to keep in mind where your light source is coming from. For this piece, it's coming from the upper right. And the type of eye highlight I'm going to do is just a kind of oval highlight with a little extra shine. Sometimes it's fun to play with other shapes depending on what the light source is. Like if there's a window, you could make the eye highlight more square with some window details. But for this piece, I'm just going to go with an oval shape in the upper right part of the eye and a kind of little extra highlight next to it. Now it's time for one of the final touches, which is adding a little light reflection. Make a new layer, use the lasso tool to select a curving shape at the top of the eye. Select a light blue color and use the soft airbrush to paint gently along the bottom of your selection. After you do this for both eyes, deselect and use the smooth watercolor brush to slightly soften the hard line that you just painted at the bottom of the reflection. Once you're happy with the shape, you can start lowering the opacity of that layer so that it's a little bit more of a subtle reflection if that's what you want. Now it's time for any final, final details that you wanna add to your eyes. So this could be things like adding a little bit of details inside the eyes, depending on the style you want, like this kind of ring that I like to do on the irises, I think is kind of fun. Another thing you could add is a little bit of makeup if it's if the character wears makeup. If you really want to make the color of the eyes pop even more, you can create a new layer, change the mode to glow, and use the airbrush to lightly paint the areas that you want to be more intense. Since this character's eyes are green, I chose a green color and painted over a few areas in the eyes that I felt could use a little bit more pop. So here is the completed artwork. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. I've really enjoyed working on this tablet. The larger display is something I could definitely get used to. It's super nice having a large colorful display and the 2K resolution makes the images appear extra crisp. You can't see any pixels, which is really nice. As far as the drawing experience itself, it was very smooth. Um, the texture of the screen is not too glassy, which is always nice. And then having all of the extra express keys is a huge plus because I can program every single shortcut I would ever use. If you guys want more info about this tablet, make sure to visit the XP Pen website. There's a link in the description and happy drawing.